unmute and share the screen. Hi. <clears throat> I hope you can hear me this time properly. And here you clearly just need my colleagues to get your um so uh, zoom. Yeah, so we can see you, we can hear you, and please share your screen and start whenever you are ready to invite. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, can you see my screen? And can you hear me? Um, we can hear you and we can see your, your screen, yes. Okay, uh, good. Uh, so I'm Yilufer and today I'm going to present my work about uh, thermal hydro biogeochemical modeling of permafrost carbon feedback. <laughs> Permafrost is a soil that has been frozen for at least two years. The top layer of permafrost is called active layer, which undergoes freeze-thaw cycles and seasonal temperature changes. <clears throat> the climate change caused increasing the active layer depths in many different permafrost sites, like in East Cypria, in which it caused increasing the active layer depths by two meters. The high latitude areas are the most climate sensitive places on our planet. The Arctic is warming twice as fast as the rest of planet at a rate that has never been observed in last 2000 years. According to National Oceaning and Atmospheric Administration, in 2018, the annual surface temperature were 3.5 degrees Celsius warmer than that was at the start of 20th century. But it was like the beginning of this story. And uh, as in 2020, the Arctic temperature record of 38 degrees Celsius was acknowledged and announced by United Nations agency. Uh, when the towing happens, actually it damages buildings, roads, and many different constructions. And on the other hand, it caused production of greenhouse gases and permafrost carbon feedback. Permafrost is an enormous source of carbon, which, uh, in which uh, most of this carbon, most of this organic carbon is stored at the depths of zero to three meter. When the towing happens, uh, greenhouse gases like CO2 is released to atmosphere and greenhouse gases cause increasing the uh, temperature and increasing the temperature will cause towing. Actually, as you can see, this is unfortunately a positive feedback loop which affects uh, climate and uh, which cause temperature rise. And we really need to do some actions, do something to save our planet. What are the sources of carbon in permafrost? One is plant's root and the other one is microbial activity. At first, scientists were hesitated about the existence and activity of microbial community at sub-zero temperature, but then an experimental study by Johnson showed that they exist there and they are active and they produce methane and greenhouse gases. Uh, there is a uh, there is like a you know interesting sentence that uh, called this microbial uh, community as little greenhouse gas factories. Uh, and when the towing happens, as I mentioned in previous slide, uh, when, when the towing happens, the thickness of active layer increases, uh, and when, uh, so it it will cause. Uh, the, the, the carbon that has been frozen in soil be available, get available for that microbe to get processed and be changed to uh, greenhouse gases. And also increasing the temperature will cause increasing the act activity of uh, uh, this microbial community. 
but uh, about the mechanism, uh, how they survive in uh, at sub-zero temperature, and you know what what do they exactly do uh, to turn this uh, carbon into greenhouse gases? Uh, scientists are not sure about the answers of this question, uh, but. Uh, for turning uh, this carbon to uh, greenhouse gases, one answer could be microbial respiration. Uh, what we have done is uh, that we built a numerical model of permafrost carbon feedback. When the carbon happens, CO2 uh, released release to atmosphere. So we have gas diffusion in soil, but in order to be able to simulate gas diffusion in soil, we first need to have soil water content and soil temperature distribution. Uh, and permafrost is a three-phase medium. We have gas, liquid, and solid phases. Uh, and uh, soil heat transfer and mass conservation equations are fully coupled. After having these characteristics, uh, we can use them as input for our gas diffusion in soil model. And uh, by the end of the day, we will be able to calculate the total CO2 flux from the soil. In order to validate our, our model, we consider a specific case. Uh, we uh, simulated the uh, winter flux from uh, Arctic permafrost region, we use winter air or salt temperature as uh, model input. This model has been done by NASA. It is an in-situ study, uh, and this figure shows the comparison of our results with NASA in-situ data, the green curve is our results, and the uh, gray spots, and the gray curve is NASA in-situ data. Uh, the, the figure shows CO2, CO2 flux changes with temperature. Uh, as you can see, uh, the, uh, the, we can see the effect of temperature changes on CO2 flux. By increasing the temperature, we have more CO2 flux from soil. And last but not least, this framework enables uh, prediction of CO2 flux from active layer. And by the help of this model, we will be able to consider the cycles and processes that can impact carbon feedback and find solutions in order to at least slow down this process and save our planet. What makes our study uh, different with previous study we considered plants root respiration as a source of carbon production in soil, which has never been considered in previous study to the best of our knowledge. Uh, yeah. uh, that's all I wanted to say for today. I hope you enjoy my presentation and thank you so much for your attention. Thanks for another good talk. I remember the talk that um, um, we uh, um, heard from you last year. A nice one. And again, it reminded me of them, of course, and you know, it's the year that I'd like to see if we can do what I see what I like. Now, you've had now 